Hello, welcome to my channel. I'm All Things Wrestling, and today I'm going to be reviewing WWE Monday Night Raw, 17th of February 2020. We kick off the show with Randy Orton making his way to the ring. He has something to say. We show the uh, video package between Randy Orton and Matt Hardy. He said tonight he's supposed to face Matt Hardy in a no holds barred match, but after what happened last week, that's not going to happen. Matt can't get cleared by the doctors. Uh, Matt Hardy comes out wearing a neck brace. He's like, I want to know why you took Edge's second chance away. What the hell is wrong with you, Randy? You didn't want to answer the question, so you made me feel like Edge. You wanted to take this all from me. You cannot take this from me. I came here to fight you. To surprise no one, to people doctors won't clear me to compete. Matt says he is a man of his word and he is here. Much like Ed, he has grit. Matt says he will not quit, he will not die. You can knock him and Edge down all you want, but they will not die. Matt says his future will not be determined on your terms. They will be determined on his terms. Uh, Randy says Matt should have said goodbye last week when he could still walk out of the arena on his two feet. Matt gets on the apron. Randy uh, is like, what are you going to do? You're a sitting dog. What happened if I RKO'd you right now? Randy says, you have balls, but no one will understand why he did what he did. I respect you for what you've done. I respect Edge and loved him like a brother. I'm sorry. I'm truly sorry. Walks off. Takes his um, little jacket thing off on the ramp. Um, Matt gets a chair. Um, Randy climbs onto the apron. Matt swings and misses. Uh, then Randy Orton attacks him. Gets a chair. Hits him on the back with it. Drives the edge of the chair onto his chest multiple times and hits him on the back again does another one man concerto uh, on the steel steps this time um, referees come down try and stop him Randy Orton's kind of like mm, okay starts to leave comes back and then does it a second time and says I'm sorry <sighs> 10 out of 10, absolutely fantastic. Randy Orton is one of the best parts of the show right now. He honestly really is. It is fantastic. Absolutely fantastic with what Randy's doing right now. Loving every second of it. We then had Eric Rowan versus Alistair Black. Black Mass for the three count. Two out of five, really below average. Alistair Black's capable of a lot more. Then Charlotte Flair makes her way out of the ring and says, blah, 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 I'm going to class up NXT. How dare Rhea Ripley has your destiny to step on my ring and my show. You're not. It's not your ring or your show, Charlotte. You're not even the pissing champion. Fuck off. She says, I am going to face her at WrestleMania, even though she kind of confirmed that yesterday. Charlotte is just annoying at this point. She just drones on about the same random crap. I'm not ever enjoying any of Charlotte's promos at this point. I'm going to give it a 1 out of 10. She <coughs> is getting the Street Profits um, poly, um, marking right now. She's just on the Street Profits level. We then had uh, a triple threat match for the 24-7 Championship. Uh, Riddick Moss rolled up Mojo for the three count and retains the championship. A match between R Truth, Mojo, Rolling, and Riddick Moss. I forgot to mention that. Um, not going to rate it because it was barely anything. But good on Riddick Moss for getting another good win. After the match, Yojo, Mojo uh, yells at R Truth and R Truth with a kick and a scissor kick. Nice little bit of R Truth getting some good stuff out of that in the end. Then we have Drew McIntyre make his way to the ring. He said, Come WrestleMania, I'm going to invade Suplex City and demolish that bitch to the ground with uh, a Claymore and become WWE Champion. Paul Heyman comes out, teases that Brock Lesnar's here, which he wasn't. He's like, You thought you were going to be here. Um, yeah, it just goes on and on about that. Drew tells Paul to wait there. He says Brock's name over and over. You can say it anywhere. You can say what Drew uh, say it when Drew kicks his head off and becomes a WWE champion. Paul says he found 
respect for Drew. He did not come here to debate Drew. He is a huge admirer of his talents. You know someone who is not a admirer of yours and he is your opponent tonight. It's MVP. <coughs> MVP tells Drew, Mr. Heyman might not have an issue with you, but I do. As an old friend, he invited Drew to the VIP lounge. He treated Drew with respect of an elite level VIP. He thought we were friends, but how did you repay me? Drew says he knows this one. I kicked your head off. MVP's like, if he thinks he's Billy Connolly, he said it was a cheap shot and he will kick his ass. We then have the match. Claymore, three count, not going to rate it. But I'm going to rate the overall segment a 8 out of 10 because it made Drew look pretty damn good, actually. Which is what we need to do. We need to keep building up Drew as a big monster force and have him win the championship at WrestleMania. For the love of God, do not let Brock Lesnar retain. Um, then we have Becky Lynch make her way to the ring with a paper bag. Uh, she says only animals go for the neck. When they do it when they go after weak prey. Um, she tells Shayna to look at the face of the longest reigning war women's champion in history. Does she look like prey to you? She has run... The uh, murder row of opponents. She cut them all down because she thought she had to. She's coming after Shayna because she wants to. Shayna appears on the time trial. Said, looking around your bag of hard-earned cash for something is not going to do. She says, Elimination Chamber, she will win and face your WrestleMania. This is a cage match. I came as a cage fighter. This is perfectly laid out for me. I will chew through everyone in the cage. And then I'm going to tear the living shit out of you. Becky thanks Shayna for letting her know. And she's watching closely and be rooting for her. 7 out of 10. Overall entertaining. I like these two working together. I, I'm intrigued for what they are going to do for a match. I really am. Then we have a match. Rusev and Huberto versus Bobby Lashley with Lana and Angel Garza with Selena Vega. Uh, Garza with a roll-up and a handful of ties for the three count. Bobby Lashley and Angel Garza win. After the match, Rusev attacks Garza and knocks him off the turnbuckle. Overall, the match is going to get a 2.25, slightly below average. What do you really expect? They're burying Rusev very hard here at this point, and I'm not impressed. After this match, we have a Corey Save vs. Natalia match. Uh, Asuka with a round kick to the temple. The referee starts count and gets 10. Corey Save wins. <coughs> Corey Save and Asuka celebrate Corey's victory. Uh, 2 out of 5, again, below average. Ugh. Then we have the worst freaking segment in the world. Seth Rollins is in a really shit ring with like podium and random things. He's got a really bad jacket on and he's got a man bun. He goes on about being the Monday Night Messiah and he's, here's his seminar and he's going to go on to phase two of his plan because he's vanquished the Viking Raiders, Samoa Joe and Kevin Owens and blah, blah, freaking blah. He just goes on to this for a few minutes, and then after that, the Viking Raiders come down, beat up Aikman and Razor, Kevin Owens comes out, hits a stunner on Rollins. The segment's going to get a 2 out of 10. The only reason it gets a 2 is because Kevin Owens and Viking Raiders attacked him. Overall, it was very bland, very boring. Seth Rollins is just annoying. It's not even entertaining anymore. <sighs> we then go to... The club making another way to the ring. AJ Styles is like, I am here the best person on any wrestling brand ever. I am phenomenal. Who's next? I don't care who it is as long as the WWE Championship available. It doesn't matter who it is. It could be Drew McIntyre. It could be Brock Lesnar. It could be Ricochet. It could be Shawn Marcus. It could be Razor Mahorn. It could be Sting. It could be Hulk Hogan. He said he will show his dominance at Super Showdown. Ricochet interrupts and says... AJ says, little Ricky, hold on. AJ says he was joking when he mentioned your name. AJ says he was being nice. He was being nice to a lot of people. No one believes you're going to be WWE Champion. What have you done to deserve a championship match? Or a number one contention match? Ricky says he isn't mad at AJ for thinking he doesn't deserve a tie match. He says he earned his tie match. I will beat Brock Lesnar. What If you're not sold on me, will I have a match right now? Carl's like, no, 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 no. You can challenge me. 
AJ's not facing this non-good brother in his first match back. So we have Ricochet versus Carl Anderson. Ricochet with a super kick followed by a fireman's carry for a three count. Going to give it a 2.75 out of 5. Slightly above average match. Good win for Ricochet. Uh, then we go to Charlie Caruso with Liv Morgan. She's asked about Ruby Riot's comments from last week. She says, excited anyone when Ruby came back. In the moment, a Russian moment, a rush of emotions. When Ruby came out to celebrate a victory. <clears throat> as one of the most uh, great moments of her career. She then threw it aside. Threw her friendship aside. And that was enough to break anyone. Not long ago it would have broken me. But I'm not a puppy on a leash as she described. I'm comfortable in my own skin. And I'll be looking at things with a clear eye. I'm going to eliminate Shayma. I'm going to eliminate Ruby Riot And move on to the Women's Championship match at Wrestlemania. 6.5 out of 10. They're adding a bit of depth to the character of Liv Morgan. And I'm liking it. We then go to the main event. Eric Ivar and Kevin Owens versus Aiken Razor and Buddy Murphy. Why does this feel like a rehash again? Um... Kevin Owens with the stunner, but Rollins breaks up the cover. DQ win for Kevin Owens and the Viking Raiders. <clears throat> match is going to get a, a 2 out of 5. After the match, Rollins directs traffic. He says, this is what happens when you uh, step in the way of progress. This is what happens when you impede his vision. He tells Kevin that you will crucify him since day one. It's time to crucify you. The true prophets make their way to the ring. Um, Rollins uh, retreats. Um, and then Kevin Owens, the Viking Raiders and Street Profits take control and win the Raw. Ugh, God damn it. This Raw was, it had some good moments, but overall it was a bit, yeah. The show started strong, progressively got worse as the night went on. Going to give this show a 4 out of 10, below average show. But still not as bad as SmackDown is most of the time. Yeah, anyway, that has been my review. If you have enjoyed it, please smash that like button. Share and subscribe. And I shall catch you all later. Bye.